all gonna die. Okay, episode 5, titled Red Dawn. Honestly, it should have just been titled Confessions of a Serial Killer because we're getting everything revealed from every single character and they're telling all the other characters. So everything's all out there. And this is the middle of this season, officially. Before I go any further, though, I do want to let you all know that last week when I was reviewing episode 4, for some reason I said Chet dies. I don't know why I said that. Maybe it's because he was in the pit and he was close to dying and i assumed that he did die but i completely forgot he was still alive but he dies in this one so i i can say that now but anyways leave your comments below tell me what you thought about this episode now looks like with this episode five it's ending off on a certain storyline and now leading into a totally different direction where the first five episodes were mainly focused on a serial killer or more than one serial killer at a camp. It's looking like it's turning to a more supernatural element now that both serial killers are dead. They've been brought back to life from Satan and it looks like all the victims that died at Camp Redwood are now stuck there. And it looks to me that from what we saw for next week's episode, it's the 100th episode by the way. So it's celebrating a big milestone for American Horror Story. But it looks like that one's going to be more of a storyline that revolves around the ghosts and the spirits that haunt Camp Redwood. So that's going to be something totally different than what we've already seen from the first five episodes. But a lot of interesting revelations happen to some of our characters by the end of this episode. But probably one of the more interesting ones ones in my opinion and doesn't really they don't focus on this character as much except at the beginning is the character of Donna Chambers where you found out that she wasn't Rita and you get a bit of a backstory of where she came from and it kind of explains why she is the kind of person that she is trying to figure out what Mr. Jingles is all about what makes his mind work because it looks like from this flashback four years earlier we find out that her father was himself a serial killer and it was quite shocking to her so for her to understand how the mind works of a psychopath kind of makes a lot of sense so you were given a lot of interesting insight to her character though as i said we don't really learn much more about her in this episode that's only a bit a piece of information that we get on her past though it seems to me something that were given that type of information might be vital for the future episodes because what other reason they would be talking about that because a lot of these flashbacks are really pinpointing something that's going to happen in the present time of the episode or maybe something that's going to be foreshadowing one of the future episodes. But this is a good segue to lead into the present time of 1984 because Donna had witnessed Ramirez being resurrected. So get her giving this information from him maybe you know also another bit of good information that she's going to obtain maybe for the future i don't know but it seems to me that there's a reason why she was the character to witness this guy get resurrected from looks like to be satan and then there's margaret and chet when they're in the boat and she reveals to him who she really is what she really did that she's the actual killer and then she she kills him so there's his death officially but as i already said it looks like everyone they're confessing these deep dark secrets and it makes sense being that this part of Camp Redwood will be closing its doors on that chapter and now we're going to possibly enter this new supernatural chapter or it seems to be something like that and this once again we go back to Donna which confesses to Montana and Xavier she was only responsible for releasing Richter from the institution Xavier gets pissed off goes after Donna tries to kill her she flees and runs into Richter again he doesn't care about her and eventually it's her Margaret and Xavier Xavier kills Richter and Margaret kills Xavier and this is the point that where eventually later on Ramirez revives Richter with this satanic resurrection so i this is where it's kind of like foreshadowing where the rest of this show is going to go because now we're we're leaving the whole world of psychopaths and serial killers for as far as we know and now going to this more supernatural realm putting all these confessions aside one moment that was kind of it seemed tender-hearted but then it seemed weird and then it seemed really bizarre was the fact that Ray encounters Brooke again and Brooke thinks Ray is still alive but we know he's dead and they get a bit intimate and we know what she's doing she's pretty much having sex with a ghost she later finds his head in the fridge I mean that I 
I couldn't even comprehend how I would feel if I was her knowing that she was being intimate with a dead person. So that was just something that felt a little felt a little off with everything else going on in the episode, but this is an American horror story. Random things always happen. So that was something that was really just really out of focus compared to the rest of the episode, but what leads on towards the end is when Brooke finally meets up with Montana. Montana, once again, another confession. She's telling her that she's the one who hired Ramirez. They get into this rumble, and she eventually kills Montana, which the when the bus full of kids see her doing that, she looks guilty. That's how it ends. She's taken to custody, looking like the, she's a serial killer. What makes it worse is Margaret comes out. She stabs herself, making it look like Brooke was the one that did that. And the last very few moments of this episode, we have Ramirez and Richter both in the car driving to Los Angeles now in their new afterlife, I guess you can call it. So now we're looking at three different types of scenarios here. One with Brooke, now she's in prison for what she's done, apparently. And then you have our two psycho killers, or what we thought one of them was a psycho killer, and they're both heading to Los Angeles, and you see all the victims that can no longer leave Camp Redwood. As you saw Ray, he tried to leave in the ambulance. He can't leave, so you're all stuck in that that environment, just like how it was in the first season of American Horror Story Murder House. No one can leave that house. That's exactly what's happening in this camp. And it looks like from what we saw for next week's episode, it might be focusing a little bit on the antics of these ghosts now and how they're going to be running the place, so to speak, because Montana feels she can fuel some great power with this new identity she now has. But being that this is now considered the turning point, the real turning point of where the rest of the show is going to go, I still have faith that it might be a season I'm still going to enjoy, hopefully one of my favorites still, because this is still a season I really like. But time will tell, see where the next five episodes take us, because it looks like it's going to be taking us into an entirely different realm of 1984. But once again, guys, tell me in the comments below what you thought about this season. Thank you again for watching my review. Sorry I was a bit late for this one, but I'll make sure to be a little bit on time for next week's episode, episode 6. And also stay tuned, this Sunday we'll be reviewing Watchmen, premiering on HBO this Sunday night. But guys, consider subscribing so we can talk movies and more where anything is possible.